Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Kaiser Dogfish designed by Caleb Waldman, who I'm unfamiliar with, but I wanted to make sure you guys knew. This knife is available. I'll make sure and link it right down below. It does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. So this is a button lock. Something I noticed here is that, you know, the stop pin's internal, but also where the plunge lock engages is actually entirely within a section of the blade. Interesting. Does that mean that it'll hold up better? I don't know. I, I would, I'm not sure if that system makes it a little bit better. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and uh, give it a test right here at the beginning. Yeah, that one's fine. Perfectly fine. I don't know. I don't know if that's a better system. I don't know if they're onto something. If that means that it's got more, sorry, it's Nick the camera mount there. If that means that it's more held in place, right? There's, there's more surface contact maybe. Or it's luck of the draw. I don't know. But there you go. There's the spine whack test. This one survives. So we're good to go. Let's go ahead and um, measure the... Uh, the overall length. Uh, overall length here coming in at 7.35 inches, so not quite seven and a half blade length, three and an eighth, cutting edge three inches on the dot. How about some size comparisons? Uh, any custom scales you see in this section can be found down in the description under original goat and others. So up against the 8010 and the 8020.5, much closer to the size of the 8020.5. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? Much closer to the size of the Para 3. And then finally, let's put it up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue and the Hogue Deca. All right, how's the action? First of all, how's the lockup after I just beat on it a bit? Boy, that's solid. It's kind of cool. Um, truthfully, I like this knife. I like how it looks. But anyways, back to the action. Minimal button stick, not bad. It'll work itself out. Not a lot of travel. We also have a knurled button, which I don't know why, but I like it. Flipping action is good. It's also got a front flipper. And it also has this little opening hole that you can kind of, you got to dig at it a bit, but you can get in there and reverse flick it. I've seen other designs that use this sort of tri-deployment thing, and they a lot of them all end up looking the same. This one looks a little different. It's got a little bit of, look how that, the, they carved out the little choil area and gave you a little notch there, and they give you some jimping. It's just a lot more catered to the human hand. It has a lot more, it's got a little more styling going. It's not the only knife I've ever seen that looks like this. Just, I like the look of it. It's cool, right? Action is good. I'm happy with it. It feels good. Everything feels crisp and solid. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that the scales are um, aluminum um, and if they're textured, right, in a pleasant way. But anyways, action's good. Yeah, we're good to go there. Carry profile, thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see there it's about the same length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. Pretty compact. This was um, this is one of those knives that was just kind of a joy to carry. Not too big, definitely. Nowhere near too big. And obviously not small enough to forget about. So, I mean, my experience was good. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. Where is the hardware? There's very little. Um, so where a cool element of this knife is that there's just not an enormous amount of hardware holding things in place. And actually, real quick, what I want to do is I want to take this apart. I want to take the pocket clip off so that we can see. Um, but the... The, the pocket clip has a T8 screw. Let's just remove that real quick. Okay, and then the pivot, there we go. Sorry, I had a little bit of trouble getting that out, but I did, I did get it out. This is just like a placeholder, right? So we have, what we have here is, in fact, a, a filler tab situation, but you can flip this over to the other side so that it, it is a filler tab, but it, it, it well, I guess all filler tabs, you know, fit perfectly. Um, but it's milled and it's in an interesting shape. So it really, in my opinion, doesn't create a uh, an aesthetic uh, issue. Uh, this pocket clip can then, of course, be swapped right out to the other side. It's kind of an interesting way to do this. I honestly had to put this on the edge of a table and then tap on it with something hard to get it to uh, come back out. But not that big of a deal. And as you can see here, 
This backspacer is just, it's got pins in it and just rests inside of the liner. Now this is cool. Uh, this was very simple to get into and it will be very, very simple to put back together. Of course, I'm going to edit this so that it goes even faster, but take my word for it outside of just tapping this little filler tab out. That was actually pretty easy. Okay. And we're back together. So yeah, that was, that was very easy. And uh, something that I really like is that this piece, this filler tab that comes out is attached to essentially a Chicago end of the screw. So this screw goes all the way through to this filler tab side and then you basically just sort of squeeze them together as you screw it in and then it sucks everything back together at the back end. That is beautifully simple. This is very, very easy to take apart, put back together, right? The action is fantastic. It came back, I believe, perfectly centered. Yeah, looks good to me. And this is completely solid still. Um, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, I uh, that's big points for that. I, I really like that system. I think that's really nice. Obviously, not the first time I've ever seen anything like that, but it's still cool. I like it. Let's go ahead and weigh it. So the weight on this guy is going to come in at. We're looking at aluminum steel liners and 154 cm for 3.39 ounces of weight. Right, pretty good ratios there. Honestly, considering the amount of blade you get. And then your balance is, yeah, a little bit behind the pivot, but not bad. We're still under four ounces, so the balance isn't as important, in my opinion. It's not a super long knife or anything like that. Um, no real issues there. Let's um, get my calipers out and measure the blade stock thickness. So blade stock thickness on this guy, we are coming in at one. No, I don't think I grabbed that in the right place. How about how about right here? This is good flat. Okay, I guess so, 115 thousandths, not uh, super duper thick or anything like that. Okay, meat and potatoes time. Uh, the ergonomics on this knife are really nice. I mean, the the, the choked up position, if you, if you choke back, your pinky's gonna be falling off the end. It's not bad here though, honestly, in that clip. So this is, we kind of skipped over this, but I don't know, the magnet's probably still gonna try and grab. Um, no, yeah, as far as I can tell, that that's a titanium clip, right? Um, so we have these aluminum scales, we have a titanium clip, we have nested steel liners, and we have a, the spine is crowned actually on this blade as well, coated 154cm blade, really stylish looking. This texturing, I've seen this sort of spiral texturing on a number of other knives, right, the Synergy from CVV and Wii, um, but it looks good here. We just have a good classic handle profile with good ergonomic lines, even choked back because the pocket clip doesn't pass the 50% line on the handle or it's right on it. And uh, your choked up position causes the pocket clip to fall about here, but it's nice and wide and smooth. Really comfortable, really nice. It just, it feels like a good pocket knife. It's not like, you know, sometimes I, I get my knife out and I'm like, oh yeah, that's what I'm carrying today. And I hold it and I'm like, Ugh, it's just weird. This isn't weird. This is nice and accommodating, but it doesn't, it's not just doing exactly the same thing that we've seen over and over and over again. There's just subtle uniqueness here. And I like it. I really wish that we had a little bit more of a cutout to accommodate for this opening hole here. Or if we maybe had a slightly taller blade so there was more room up here, right? I, I really desperately want to reverse flick this with all of the comfort that I get with uh, something like the Demco 80-20.5 where the entirety of that hole is up here. It was just, I just failed at that. But rather than having to dig at it, right? But th that's okay because there are other means of deployment. So I can't really count it off of that and it's still technically an option, right? So it's pretty good. Like the blade shape, nice and utilitarian, nothing crazy. 154 cm is a great, well-balanced composition. I have no problem with it, especially at this price point. It's just a good blade, it's sharpened well. It's nice and, well, it's relatively thin down behind the edge. It'll do plenty well at your basic daily EDC tasks. There's really nothing else to say there. It's just a good blade shape. Uh, I just, I, again, the styling of the knife, the texturing, the combination of everything just looks and feels good. And the fact that it is a button lock and surviving the spine whack, I mean, what I do on this channel is a little, I know every time I do that, I get people going, here's why it doesn't make any sense. It's because in the natural, you know, circumstances and natural parameters, you're not, you're never going to put that much pressure on the spine. Hey, listen, the exact argument that you're, you, that you're making right now has been ferociously argued about for decades. And guess what? There's nothing new. There's no news in like the world of whether or not a light to medium to heavy spine whack is an appropriate test, right? 
So the decision that I've made on this channel, no matter how many arguments are presented to me, is I'm going to do it. Expect me to do it. I'm not going to hit it very hard. This is a plastic table with a vinyl upholstery top, so there's not really a super crazy hard surface that I'm banging this against. And even though I'm joking around and using steel gauntlets, I'm not really putting that much force on it. The point is that Metal Complex does a pretty light spine whack test. And if it can't survive that, it's probably not a good sign, right? Um, so if you want to delve into the science and the whys and the do's and the don'ts, and you go right ahead and type me up a big long paragraph, I'm probably not going to read it. Expect to see more spine whack tests. This thing survived it right here, and that's good to go in my book, right? You can use that as a means of judging it for yourself, or you can completely ignore it. It's entirely up to you as the viewer. But expect more of the same from me. So anyways, um, <laughs> I got a little weird, got a little Batman back alley there. Um, but yeah, I like it. I think that I think that that's coupling. I'm, I'm very curious to find out if that, um, because of how the button lock is engaging, if it is additional surface contact mixed with appropriate geometry of the plunge lock itself, that's actually allowing it to survive a bit better. I, I would still like to see more button-operated liner lock systems because I, I just feel like that's a better system in general. But this is this is cool. So, yeah. Um, rest of the handle, nicely chamfered down. No contouring, but the texturing is meaningful. Creates meaningful traction. That's good. We have a little aluminum backspacer here, which is fine. No lanyard hole, but who cares? Pocket clip, nothing special going on there, but it's also really good. I kind of like this gunmetal and black look. Just, it looks good, right? Uh, you saw where the stop pin was. It was internal, just like the plunge lock. Like I said, no blade play up, down, left, or right. Slight stick, nothing really crazy. No up and down blade play. Very smooth and consistent in here. And what's creating the detent is the plunge lock itself, and it's fine. It's about as expected. And like I said, still perfect centering with no, actually no detent lash. $99 knife. Very nice textured aluminum. Solid lockup. Uh, good ergonomic design, good design in terms of manipulation. Uh, it's ambi. Lefties, you got to watch out when you're choking up because guess what? That pad on your index finger comes right down on the button and you technically, with enough squeeze, boy, it's, I'm actually having a hard time doing it. Yeah, technically with enough squeeze, you can get it to disengage. Um, but that's pretty circumstantial. If you're left-handed, stay back here or keep your pad off that button. Right-handed people, there's no natural position where your finger ends up on the button, so you should be okay. Easy to manipulate, cool design, little bit off the beaten path, good materials, dependable, etc. I don't have a problem with this at 99 bucks. I think this is pretty cool. Uh, this is going to go, it's not a budget knife, but it is going to go on my recommended knives playlist. It's kind of hard to find a knife right around 100 bucks that doesn't make you go, eh, I'd rather have a budget knife or eh, I'd rather pay some more money and get something nicer, right? It's a pretty, if you like a knife of this size, this is a decent choice. I think Kaiser did a good job here. That's going to be pretty much it from me today, guys. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.